the the quote I was given was Ed deeply regrets being misled. <laughs> wow. And yeah. and you just and you know I I I rarely give my own opinion on things, but I I was struck by that. I thought. That is not going to help the situation. I mean, I mean, Jeff Norcorp was talking about this this morning. It's yeah. not hard to say, "Sorry, I made the wrong call." No, it's not. You know, it's not. It's not hard. And, and I and I think Ed Davey is failing to comprehend right now the scale of public anger at this. And and it is it is fair to say that ministers are not solely responsible. And I don't even think, as I said earlier, that they're the most responsible mm. for this scandal. But they do share some of the blame and they clearly failed to investigate the concerns that many many of these postmasters were raising with them so unless ed davy can come forward with some better answers i think he he's going to be under significant pressure and i think his position is is in danger i didn't think that at the beginning of this week I now do think it. Big news, obviously, still the post office scandal. Um, uh, what's 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 happening next in that? What's next for the post office scandal? Where are we going? Well, we've obviously had a very seismic week in Parliament. Uh, the Prime Minister got up midweek and announced that the government is finally going to legislate to exonerate mm -hmm. all of these postmasters that were wrongfully prosecuted by the post office. But there are still quite a lot of unknowns about precisely how that's going to work. Uh, Rishi Sunak told MPs that the legislation which would enable that to happen will come in the next few weeks. I presume the government will then seek to to force that legislation through uh, at a rapid pace of knots. But th th it's important that we actually find out what the actual fine print says because it's quite a complicated thing. Well, is it not constitutionally a bit iffy? Yes, and there are members of the judiciary, there are legal experts who are concerned about the precedent this sets when you have, when Parliament effectively overrules mm. decisions made by judges. So that's why it's key to see what the, the detail is. But in, in essence, what the government is asking the postmasters to do is to sign a piece of paper which says, I did not commit the crimes for which I was convicted. And then a process will ensue in which the government will then set about having all of those appeals quashed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to be all at once or whether, because we're talking... 700 yeah. uh, convictions, whether they're all going to be quashed at once or whether there'll be rounds of, of these convictions quashed, <clears throat> I presume in the Court of Appeal, but, but we are yet to see that information. And then what will happen is that, the, that once the convictions are quashed, that will help unlock the compensation, which I think is really the most important element to this. Well, that and the, the convictions are also bad, mm. but the, the compensation is what many of these people have been waiting and fighting for years to get. Uh, ever since that 2019 high court judgment effectively found that Horizon was defective. And it's worth saying, the government has said this week that people affected by that group litigation against the post office in 2019, they'll be entitled to a, a £75,000 uh, upfront payment. But the reality is we actually, they announced that quite some time ago. They announced that that was going to happen in March 2022. Right. And they've also announced £600,000 for the people who were convicted. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that was done last March. And, and these people, some of them have had interim payments, mm. but they are still waiting for their full compensation and for justice. So whilst it's been widely welcomed that the government's finally woken up and is acting... Many of these postmasters are not willing just to take the government's word for it because they've had years and years of differ and delay. So I think there's going to be a lot that's going to be happening in the next few weeks, but I don't think it's a given that uh, this is all going to now run smoothly, sure. given what we've seen in the past. And how close are we to the other side of the equation, which is finding somebody to blame? How are things looking for Ed Davey, particularly? Well, I think Ed Davey is one of many people who should bear some responsibility i don't think he's by any means the person most liable but in terms of the politics and the accountability of ministers i think sir ed davy is facing a lot of pressure this week and i think that pressure is going to continue to grow he gave a interview yesterday to itv um which was prompted by reporting around his interactions with alan bates the main postmaster mm. who championed the sub postmaster's cause where he effectively, as when he was Postal Affairs Minister between 2010 and 2012, he repeatedly brushed aside, effectively, the concerns yeah. that Bates was raising. He, he was urging Davey to act, to use his influence, to try and get to the bottom of these problems with Horizon. 
And Ed Davey repeatedly just came back and said, I'm being assured by the post office there's nothing wrong with Horizon. And so he gave this interview to ITV. And the, I always think with politicians, I'm amazed at their inability to say sorry. Mm. I think it's such a disarming thing yeah. to be able to do. And it takes the sting out of criticism to such a degree. And yet he was asked 10 times to say sorry and he did not do so. And... Actually, I wrote a big piece about him last weekend, which was exposing all of his correspondence between him and Alan Bates. And the response I got from the Lib Dems, I, I was quite astonished by it because the, the quote I was given was, Ed deeply regrets being misled. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. and you just... And, you know, I, I, I rarely give my own opinion on things, but I, I was struck by that. I thought that is not going to help the situation. I mean, I mean, Jeff Norcott was talking about this this morning. It's yeah. not hard to say, sorry, I made the wrong call. No, it's not. You know, it's not, it's not hard. And, and, I, and I think Ed Davey is failing to comprehend right now the scale of public anger at this. And, and it, is, it is fair to say that ministers are not solely responsible. And I don't even think, as I said earlier, that they're the most responsible mm. for this scandal. But they do share some of the blame and they clearly failed to investigate the concerns that many many of these postmasters were raising with them so unless ed davy can come forward with some better answers i think he he's going to be under significant pressure and i think his position is is in danger i didn't think that at the beginning of this week i now do think that well, we've had a, a, a tweet while we're talking. Tommy says, Ed Davey should definitely stand down as Lib Dem leader. His lack of effective action when he was post office minister has damaged his reputation and the whole Lib Dem brand. He has no moral authority. I mean, it's not going to go away, this. I, I, I saw also he's, he's facing an electoral challenge from a deputy, a former deputy postmaster as an independent candidate in his, in his constituency of Kingston and Surbiton. I mean, this will keep being thrown at him up until the election, assuming he's still there. But that is exactly why... Mm. It's astonishing that he didn't say sorry because Yvonne Tracy, who this deputy postmaster, is standing as... A, she's saying she's going to stand as an independent to challenge Ed Davey. She's doing that because she's heard the response from Ed yeah. Davey and she's so angered by it. I actually think Ed Davey has been given a, a massive reprieve this week by Alan Bates, who is, who is as we've said, the, the star of this drama on ITV and the, the champion of the sub-postmaster's course because I spoke to Alan Bates a lot last week when I was putting together this piece and, and he provided me with all the correspondence. And, and he, his, his frustrations with Ed Davey but also Joe Swinson after him in the post affairs brief was, was really palpable. Mm. Um, and he was very frustrated with the Tory ministers that came after. But he's been asked, he's been asked this week, you know, do you think Ed Davey's really to blame for all of this. And he said, well, I, I don't think so. But I think it's quite... I think there is a possibility that if Ed Davey just keeps the dub doubling down, that people like Alan Bates could get quite frustrated yeah. with that. So I just I just think it's a very dangerous period, actually, for him. There's a big space between not being responsible and being sort of like sort of becoming emblematic of everyone else who says they're not responsible either. Yeah, quite. which I think he could, he could fall into. I think that's fair.